So why did I choose this topic? Uh, mainly because uh, we asked the community to vote for a topic on the last Friday. And there was a vote to talk about the roadmap of Edenpier. Uh, a roadmap, uh, uh, a goal in the project has always been uh, modularization. And the core team has decided that to accomplish this uh, unit, unit testing is a must. Uh, as everyone knows, one of the key aspects when contributing code to Edenpeer is to avoid collateral damage. So that means don't break anything that works. And to allow mo modularization, out, uh, unit testing is a key aspect to assure that we are not breaking anything with our changes. Uh, so how is it done in, within Edenpeer? Uh, we have a project called Or Edenpeer Test. You can see it in Eclipse, it is right here. Uh, to run it, you just need to go to the bug configurations or run configuration. Uh, this is there by default. Uh, if you run this, uh, if you run this, uh, you will run all the unit test in Edenpeer. If you want to run just a specific class, you can just copy or duplicate it and as I did here, and then say run a single test and select the test class that you want to run. I will do that for this example because the running all tests takes quite some time sometimes. So just for showing you how it works. So basically when you run the unit test, in this case, I'm testing sales order. Uh, you see here, the test running and you see how many errors and how many failures it had. So at this point, every test runs successfully. That means we are okay. Everything is working as expected. So for example, when, when you want to make a change, let's say a customer asks you that the day promise of a line can be after uh, the day promise in the order line. So what we do then is, uh, for example, what we will do there is go to, uh, let's say this line and say, okay, uh, the date promise doesn't need to be equals, but it can be after, for example. This is a silly example, but it's just to show you how it works. Uh, when you do this and all your user cases uh, pass and everything works in the UI and every, and you think you are ready for a pull request, but then you run the unit test, uh, immediately you will see that they all fail. This is because this breaks the functionality that Edenpeer expects. When you do this, when you do this uh, when you create a pull request. The first thing that I invite you to do is to run the unit testing. If the, any change in the code that you made is breaking some unit test, you need to either change your code or discuss with the core team because that means the unit test must be updated. It is really important to keep both uh, in line so that's what I'm talking about here. The invitation is to run unit tests before creating any pull request. It is, uh, as I say, it is important to not break things that already work. Uh, another thing is to improve unit tests. That, that means it will be ideal for the project that every time you add new functionality, you create new unit tests that, that makes it better. Uh, also, as I say, keep unit tests updated. That means if I change something and I break the unit test and it is because the unit test change it, then you need to update it here and communicate it with the core team. And 
the invitation is also to create new ones to test further cases. Uh, I will show you how to create one just as an example. I will use a really silly or not realistic uh, use case, but just for showing how it works. And for this, I also want to, maybe some of you already know, but some might not. I find it really useful in this kind of uh, cases and it's TDD, Test Driven Development. Uh, what TDD does is that it is a software development process that relies on software requirements uh, being converted to test cases. Uh, this changes the usual way that most of the people develops. Usually you develop code and then create the test. TDD uh, encourages developers to do the opposite. First write the test case and then write code that uh, complies with that test case. This is really useful when you want to keep the test cases updated. What it is, is pretty simple. It's a cycle that has five steps. You create a test and the test must fail because there's no code at the point when you write a test, there's no code that fulfills it. So the test fails. Then you write code just to pass the test. Then uh, it is important in TDD to keep the units small. You write code that just passes a single test case. I will show this with an, with an example. At the first iteration, you can do inelegant things. You can use hard-coded strings. As long as it passes the test, the code, the code is okay. But the last step is refactor because as we all know, Edenpeer also uh, cares a lot about high quality code. So we don't want poor code. So the last iteration of the cycle is refactoring. Let me show you this with an example. So let's go to sales order test. So let's create here a, a test. Let's say test discount calculation. Uh, let's copy the creation of an order and lines. Okay, so let's say your your user told you that you need to create discounts on sales orders. Uh, when it is uh, a standard, give him the 20% discount. When it is CNW, give him 10% discount. And when it's Joe Block, give him 0% discount. So uh, as I just mentioned before, uh, in TDD, we write first the test case. That means uh, we say it here, for example, product Asalia. Uh, we want to sell four, and just for the sake of simplicity, I will say that the price is 25, just to make the percentage calculation easier. So then I say order to get discount amount. This doesn't exist, so the test fails. So I go here to sales order and and create this method. So let's say it exists. So these errors should not be there anymore. So what I want to say is, uh, okay, if I use Joe Block as a BP, the discount must be zero. Uh, what I so if I run the test case, it should fail as stated in the previous cycle. So as we see, it fails because we haven't implemented that code. 
So as I said, we wrote code that passed this particular case. So if I say here, return big decimal zero, it should work. Uh, As we see it now, now the test passes. So we have done everything right. The test passes, so we are okay. We are good to write the second test case. So the second test case says 10%. So if I write the same, uh, let's say this is, I say, CW, so BPCW, and it must be 10. I wrote a new test case. When I run it, it should fail because I haven't write that code. As you can see, it is really simple because we write small amounts of code. This simplifies the abstraction. We don't need to abstract the whole concept at the beginning. We just write small portions or units of code. So right now, as I said, we can write really bad code at the beginning. So uh, we can say if business partner ID is equal to 117, that is uh, CNW, return, a uh, big decimal. I am expecting a 10 here, I think. Uh, else return zero. If I run this, uh, It should pass by now. It passes, so we are good. But the last steps, as I say, as I say, is refactoring. So, in this case, it wasn't that it was ten. It was it had to be the ten percent of the grand total. So, for this, we say okay, return. Uh, get grand total. If I do this, we do the refactoring, and then we run and see if it didn't break anything. I'm pretty sure it will fail in this case because I'm using grand total and I'm not calculating the grand total anywhere. So here you can see after our refactoring, it, it broke. This is why it is so important to keep doing this cyclic. So if you say calculate tax total here, uh, it should work because now it calculates the grand total base on the invoice lines. So it works, we are good to go. So now we add the test case that the, that the user told us. So when it's a standard, it's 20%. So if I say BP standard here, I say it must return 20. Once again, I run this, it must fail because I haven't wrote this, I haven't written that code. And then I go and write the smallest unit of code to pass the test. Uh, what I'm showing here is pretty simple and, and it is why it is so useful to use. Uh, sorry. So the 
and I'm saying they get the 20% discount. Okay, I change it to 20, and now it should work. So now it works. But as I said before, the last step is refactoring. We don't want poor code going into Eden Pier. So in this case, we can see the real rule. It is written here for simplicity. It depends on the open balance of the business partner. So we go and, and extract this so big decimal open balance is equals to a get CB partner into get uh, dot get. Okay. Okay. The total open balance. And let me copy that here. Uh, so here is open balance. Boom dot. Uh, Compared to, uh, let's say, new big decimal, 10% is when it's above 100. Uh, greater than zero, I believe. Get it greater than and and less than two hundred, then give the ten percent uh yeah, if the open balance is equals to zero, then 20% else uh, don't give any discount. So let's see if with that refactoring, the unit test works. So as we see, it works and the, the, the code looks much better. Then we call, instead of doing this, bring in the business partner for the, from the cache. Or yeah, we could refactor this uh, further, but for the sake of, uh, of showing you how it works, how TDD works, this is a nice example and it helps a lot with keeping the unit test up to date you can write the unit set at the same time that you write code and it is really helpful. Uh, so once again, the invitation is to help the project improving unit testing, uh, yeah, contribute those and run it every time you create a pull request. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you all. If you have any questions, uh, please write them in the chat. Nice, so I see there are no questions. Thank you all for joining. Uh, if you guys have any questions after the, the meeting, just write them on the Mattermost channel. Uh, Hengsin, you are right. The, the cycle I show is for adding new features uh, for, bot fix, for bug fixing. Uh, it is really important that you keep running the test. I will write ten things common in the matter mode so it doesn't get lost. Thank you all.